It's waiting to come up. It's almost one o'clock here. And I believe we are up. Always, don't always know. Uh, I'm Mark from a whole lot to love. All alone here in the studio. We're still doing that physical distancing thing, except for my lovely wife. Who's directing the show for me? So I so we've got a couple of cameras going here today. Just a quick shout out to my three beautiful daughters, my grandson Levi, my mom and dad who usually watch these things, Karen and Ted. So what we're going to do today? Now, last Thursday we did a flow profile uh, for a very fresh specialty coffee. This this time a little something different. We're going to do a sweet bump. We're going to pull out some sweetness in a coffee that is still a specialty coffee, but not exactly that fresh anymore. If this coffee was fresh that we'll be using today, I would use the profile I did last Thursday. There is a link down in the description for that if you want to check that out. Um, we'll get to the coffee we're using in a second. First, oops, sorry. We were doing a little prep here. Let me put stuff back together here. I'm actually going to take that off in a second. So the machine I'm going to use today is an ECM Classica. Uh, this is a single boiler vibration pump reservoir fed machine. And of course, it's got flow control and that's what we're doing. So for uh, last Thursday, we started with profiles, another profile today. And I've got three more coming up on the next uh, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, so uh, this Thursday, join us if you're working with more stock sort of a, uh, you know, a lower cost uh, Italian style typical bean blend coffee or a darker roast, a really good profile for that. But let's go through this machine. So ECM Classica, uh, here's the flow control right here. If you get the machine with the flow control, it also comes with the group mounted brew pressure gauge. More on that in a sec. Um, this is a PID machine. This is a high end single boiler, really focused on the espresso lover. Um, you can steam and froth milk with this. Um, to do that, you can also, so you can set very accurate brew temps on this. I'm running at 200, 201 for my brew temperature for this coffee today. If I want to do some steaming, I flick a switch here and then the machine will come up to steam temperature. Um, just so you know, to get up to full steam temperature, you can choose what temperature you want uh, to go up to when you steam. Um, so you can adjust that with a PID. Um, it's about 55 seconds for an average steam temperature, but you can start steaming before that. And that's a little trick with some single boilers, is before they actually reach their full steaming temperature, you can start steaming. It'll keep the heating element on and keep it generating steam. Um, another unique feature with this machine is the ability to adjust brew pressure from the outside of the machine. So I'm gonna take this back off now, the cover here. The OPV, that's the uh, over pressure valve, which the dust brew pressure is right here. And when I have a flow control, um, now, usually when you adjust brew pressure, um, you'd put in a blind filter basket, but with a flow control, I can totally close it, which I have it closed right now, then turn the pump on, you see no water is going to come out, then I'm going to watch my brew pressure gauge here, and it's reading 10, and on a vi vibration pump, that's where we set machines. It's 10 bar, this is internal, that'll get you about 9 bar at the group when you're actually brewing. But I could change that, you know, if I, there's really no reason in my mind to go above 10. Um, I've read a lot of technical papers about brewing at higher brew pressures. You really don't want to. So we're going to leave it at 10 and I can adjust that brew pressure. So that's really nice with this machine. Something else. So with the flow control, you do want to know what your flow rates are. Um, I do have a PropTech Pro 700 over here. This is a rotary pump machine. It's going to have a higher flow rate um, when it's stock without a flow control. On, a, on this machine with a rotary pump, because they push more water, it's 11 grams per second with a stock mushroom valve. And here's the stock mushroom valve compared to the flow control. Um, but with a stock valve, this will do 11 grams per second. On this Classica, which uses a vibration pump, the stock flow rate's just a hair under 7 grams per second. So when you're using a flow control machine, um, you do want to know what your flow rate is at certain valve positions. And it's, so I call it calibration, and I do, I'm not going to go through it completely. It's really quite simple. It sounds way more complex than it is. Uh, but down in the description, there's a link to show you how to do calibration. It's really not calibrating. It's finding out what your flow rates are. So what you do is you open your valve at a one-quarter turn. Then for 20 seconds, you just put, you'd either weigh the amount of water that's coming out or measure the volume, so you just let it run for 20. And on this machine, it's really easy to know when you're doing the 20 seconds. So you see, that's my flow rate at a quarter turn, because um, I have the shot timer that starts automatically on the display here. So you just continue doing that. So you'd run it 20 seconds at a quarter turn, weigh it, um, or measure the volume in milliliters, then divide that by 20, and that will give you the flow rate at that. And then you continue on, so you do it at half a turn, 
three quarters, one turn, one and a quarter, and you keep on going um, up to two turns basically. Um, this machine here, if you can run this one wide open, now I have had some questions um, on other flow control videos. If you're using a rotary pump, you almost, you really don't ever want to run it wide open because rotary pumps move a lot more water. Like I said, the stock flow rate on this rotary pump, this Pro 700 machine, is 11 grams per second. If you run this wide open, you're going to get nearly 30 grams per second. There's really no reason to do that except in some really weird circumstance. But over here, I did all my calibration, just measuring the different flows. And if I wanted to run this machine totally stock, like the, like the flow control wasn't here, it's one and a quarter turn. So I just turn it to here. And if I don't touch it, that's going to give me exactly what I'd get if the machine was stock. Now, that's not what we're going to do today. Well, I will do one at the stock flow rate, so I'll leave that here right now. Some of the other equipment I'm going to use. Now, Espresso is all about controlling variables. So the more variables that you have a really good handle on, the more successful you're going to be. So I do have a high-end grinder here. This is a Chiato E37S. It's got the quick set here for an incredibly fine adjustment of grind size. It has three timed grinding presets, and it's usually incredibly accurate dose to dose using those time grinding presets. It, and you'll see in a moment, it does a lovely distribution of a beautiful, fluffy, clump-free grind. So that's one piece I'm using. I'm going to be using a Kaya Scales because I'm going to pull a couple shots. We're going to use brew ratios. I'm going to do one shot using the stock flow rate. Then I'm going to try and improve my flavor by using that sweet bump profile that I'll talk more about. So I'm going to weigh my coffee. I'm going to use 19 grams of coffee. So I'm going to weigh it out. If I'm within three tenths of a gram of my dosing weight, that's close enough for me. Then I have another scale here. Now you could do this with one scale, and if you're going to use one, I'd suggest the Lunar because you can weigh a portafilter with this one. Then I also have the Pixis, which has the same functionality as the Akaya Lunar, but I'm going to use that to weigh my shots. So I'm going to use a 19 gram dose. We're going to do a one to two ratio. So I'm going to look for 38 grams out for both of those shots, both the standard flow and when I do the profiled shot, I'm going to do a one to two ratio. Then we're going to taste and compare and see if I was successful. Something else, and I've been talking about these a lot, this is the IMS uh, Nanotech coated shower screen. Um, I love these things. I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to do a little demo on the flow on this. And here's a stock screen. And think of the Nanotech screen as like a really nice non-stick pan. More on that in a second. Um, over here on the stock screen, it's got an actual screen on there. This one is flat and it's got a non-stick quartz coating on it basically. So there's no place for coffee to get grabbed. And I don't know if you can really see here, but I just took this one off. I hadn't really used it very much, but it's got a lot of coffee already in there. Of course, you still want to back flush and do all that normal thing to keep things clean, but these are difficult to keep clean. This sort of a screen, you can take a, you can take a towel up here and just wipe it off and it's going to be really, really clean. I mean, think about it. I mean, the example I use is if you were, you know, cooking an egg in a pan with a screen on the bottom of it, it'd get all yucky, right? And if you have a nice non-stick pan, you basically don't even need any oil. It comes right off. I also happen to have a uh, Cafe Works silicone group gasket. Oh, I want to actually put my portafilter back in here to keep it warm. Um, when I put a portafilter into a machine just to keep it warm, and you should always do that when not in use, I don't crank them down. There's no reason to abuse your gasket. You're just trying to transfer some heat. So I just, I just put them in there gently. Another thing that can happen is you'll, if you crank it in, you turn the machine off, it cools down, you might come back tomorrow, you pull your portafilter off, you're like, where's my filter basket? Well, it's stuck up there, especially on the stock, sort of the harder gaskets. Um, so here's a stock gasket, it's a lot harder, um, and you have to push a little harder to get a good seal. With these nice silicone gaskets, they're nice and soft, you don't have to push really hard. One other tool I'm gonna use, and this I started using this, I don't know, it's been maybe about a month now, um, this is a really high-end tool, and if you want, absolutely no question that you have perfect distribution and tamping. The Bravo distributor and tamper, this is a calibrated tamper, is a really nice set. Now, it is expensive, but this is a tool that's really going to help you take any of those variables out of the equation. You're going to know that your distribution and tamp is great. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know for two years I've been using a leveler. It's called the Jack. I like it a lot. It's much less expensive than this, and it also compresses the coffee at the same time so you don't have to tamp. With this, this distributor, it's got kind of this piston action here, so it just drops, so it's not compressing the coffee enough, so you still need to tamp, but you're going to get perfect distribution and perfect tamping pressure 
every time. So those are some of the tools that I'm going to use. And again, the idea here is to be as consistent as possible with everything so that I'm only affecting one thing when I'm making an espresso. Um, so the coffee we're going to use. Um, so I picked out something a little special today. I've got Fuego's Bear Claw Blend. This is a blend of Brazilian and Ethiopian coffees. This I do consider a specialty coffee. Now, I did that uh, profile uh, last Thursday where if I was using a really fresh coffee, and this coffee is going to be really nice fresh, um, I would use that. This coffee I found in the drawer, and I have many different sorts of coffee around all the time that I'm experimenting with. This one um, was roasted on March 23rd. So this is about six weeks out, and that's what we're going to use today. So it's pretty much done with its off-gassing. And if you want to see a good demo of what off-gassing means in a really fresh coffee, check out my last one where we tamed the brightness down on a super fresh coffee with a flow profile. I did a little demo, kind of like a little mini pour over of some older ground coffee and some that was really fresh from roast. And if you've ever seen a pour over done, you know that the CO2 just starts bubbling off and you have to let that happen so that the water get into the coffee and actually get the flavors out. Now, just for fun, um, this is a local roaster. We really like his coffee, we carry it. We had him in in December and I was going through my drawers and I keep stuff around. So just for fun this morning, I have some that was roasted. This was uh, in the beginning of December of 2019. So just for kicks, I tried this profile uh, I did one uh, normal without flow control, then I did one with flow control, the sweet bump we're going to do today, and it really improved even this six month old. Now, it, you know, this is the sort of coffee you really want a little bit fresher, but in my opinion, six weeks for this coffee is fine. Now, I'm going to tell you the best place, this bag was sealed this morning, I just opened it this morning, the best place to keep a coffee for that amount of time is right in the unopened bag, away from heat, I mean in here. Average temperature is probably around 62 or so because um, we turn off the heat at night. Just keep it away from that. But that's the best place because once it's done off ga gassing, all you want to do is keep oxygen away from it. Now you can and people do buy super high end coffees and they freeze them because they have to buy them in bulk. That's an option, no problem. So that's the coffee we're going to use. Again, it's six weeks from roast. If it was fresh, I'd use a different profile on this. Now, profiling may sound all, you know, like, what do I need to know? Well, there's just a few basic principles, and that's kind of the purpose of these streams I'm doing on profiling, is to get you the basic principles to use. So how to work with a super fresh coffee, how to mimic shots from other machines. We're going to be doing some of that. Um, I know people have uh, left comments. They've used Flow Profile to mimic Slayer shots. I'm going to do a profile, uh, I think it's uh, next Tuesday, that's a lever profile that I really love with one of my favorite, you know, lower cost Italian blends. But let's get into it. Let's pull a shot. I'm going to use uh, just standard flow rate. So on here, I know that my stock flow rate is at one and a quarter turns. That's where I'm set right now. Take my portafilter out, make sure that's dry. So I always say, I do like a nice dry portafilter. Now, I dialed this in a couple hours ago. We'll see how close we are. I'm looking for 19 grams. I'm going to turn my scale on and not forget to tear it here. I do love the Akaya scales. I, there's another link down in the description where we connected, because these scales will connect to their apps, and we use the Brewmaster app on the five profiles that I'm doing through this series where we actually log the shots, got our ratios. You can take notes. So I'm just going to tear that scale. And these scales can do all kinds. They can auto tear. They can start timing for you on drip. Um, really, really, these are the high-end espresso scales. So, let's just grind here. And we'll see how it is. I, but I looked, I'm guessing I'm a hair over 19 grams here. Um, that was a 3.7 second grind, but look at the nice distribution of that coffee into the portafilter. Clump-free, fluffy, and let's see where we're at. And I'm at 19.8. I bumped this earlier, so I might have had just a little left in there. So I'm just going to scrape off a little bit, because I want to be within 0.3 grams when we do this extraction. I'm at 19.4, so I'm 0.1 gram over, so I'm just going to knock out just a little bit more. I call that sacrificing coffee to the gods for better shots. And I'm at 19.3, so that's going to be good. That's good for me. So to use the uh, distributor here, again, it's got that pneumatic thing, so this doesn't tamp the coffee. It just gently pulls down. You can, you can change the rate that that falls if you're working in a cafe environment and you want it faster. So I just set it on, and it's got the rim. So the way you use this distributor is first you spin clockwise. And that's going to distribute the coffee out towards the edges. And then the way that the angles are designed on the bottom of this, then you spin counterclockwise. That brings everything to the center nice and level. 
and I'm using a Barista Pro 20 gram basket. Um, this tool, uh, the precision tools like this, they fit very well in baskets. So when you pull this tool out, you don't want to like yank it out real fast. You want to gently pull, otherwise you could create some suction. So there's our leveled coffee. Now I'm going to use a tamper. So this is, you can adjust the pressure on this. I believe it's 24 to 36 pounds. So you take this off and you can adjust it. Um, I'm probably at about 30. I honestly don't know. I don't care all that much about tamping pressure so long it's, it's consistent. But this is going to get you consistent and perfectly flat and level every time. So just push down, gently pull out. And I have perfect distribution and a perfect tamp. No questions asked. Don't even have to think about it. It's, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to put that in. Um, I've got my machine set where I want. Again, I'm brewing at 201. And I'm going to use a little Pixis scale here. And we're going to do this to a 1 to 2 ratio. Now, I did dial this coffee in a couple hours ago. Sometimes I turn the lights on and things change a little bit. But we'll see where we're at, see where we're at here. So I'll get my scale on. This Akai is so cute. It also comes with this great little case. And when you turn it on, if the weight's already on there, it auto tears for you. So let's do this extraction and just see what happens. Again, I'm looking for a one to two ratio. So I'm looking for 38 grams. Notice on a vibration pump, it's going to come up to pressure more slowly than a rotary pump would. It's looking pretty decent. I'm at 17 seconds. I'm just a hair under nine bar of pressure on the gauge up here. 24, 26, and we're at 30, and I'm going to stop there and see how close we are. So I hit a 38.3 grams, 29 seconds. This is a coffee I've done many, many times. I tend to like a little bit longer stock extraction on that, but let's take a taste. Okay, that's not bad. I expect if, you know, this was a little closer to roast, because I'm not getting some of the sweetness I've had out of this one. This is fresher. But it's not, it's not bad at all. It's not overly acidic. It is, you know, it is a medium sort of a, a coffee. So there's that one. So let me knock this out. Now we're going to use the flow profile. I do like to keep my stuff clean, so I'm just going to wipe off the uh, excess there. We'll knock out the puck here. Again, I do like a nice dry basket and a clean area. Okay, so we're going to grind again. I'm going to make sure my uh, Akaya Lunar here is teared properly. And we're good. I, mean, I, I love the sound. I love how this grinder distributes. It's gorgeous, and I can tell just by looking at it again, I'm probably over the 19 a little bit, which would be consistent with what we had last time. 19.34, so um, that's exactly what we did last time. Um, so I am going to work with this, not knock any out. Again, if I'm within three tenths of a gram on a dose, that's fine. I think that's accurate enough. So again, with a leveler, I'm just going to set it on top. Turn clockwise, or the distributor, I'm sorry, I'm so used. I've been doing levelers for two years. This is a distributor, not a leveler. So clockwise, a few turns, then go counterclockwise. And again, with this sort of a precision tool, I want to be careful I don't yank it out of there too fast because it can create a vacuum. So I'm just going to gently lift that out and take the tamper. And again, it's got the rim here, so you're always going to get a perfectly even and level tamp. No questions asked, just taking that kind of stuff out of the equation. So we'll load this up. So the profile we're going to do, the sweet bump, what we're going to do is 15 seconds at a half a turn. So that's about four grams per second. So I'm going to take this down. I'm just going to fully close it, make sure I'm closed, then just go half a turn. Then at 15 seconds, what I'm going to do is take it to one and a quarter turns, which is about the stock flow rate. So we're going to do kind of you know, a gentle flow at first, let the water get in there. Then we're going to bring that flow up. And we're going to try and pull more of the sweetness, more of the fruits out of this coffee. And then we're going to bring it back down to avoid bringing out any potentially stale flavors or doing an over extraction at the end. So I'm going to go 15 seconds at a half turn, about five seconds at one and a quarter, then back to a half until I reach my final brew ratio, which I'm again looking for 38 grams out from that 19 gram dose. So we'll get this set up. 
tear my scale. Again, I could have this scare, scale auto tear for me. So I'm at my half turn. So I'm just gonna start the machine and then I'm gonna watch the timer here. And then at 15 seconds, I'm gonna go another three quarters turn, let that run for about five and then just let it and bring it back to uh, the half turn and let that finish the shot to our 38 grams and see if we can't get some more sweetness out of there. I just want to tuck this scale in there a little bit. Okay. Um, and also, you know, you can, you could use the brew pressure gauge here to, to do things if you want. I tend not to pay too much attention to it. One thing I do notice, like if you're running a stock flow rate and had this on here, you're going to see generally brew pressure start to drop as your puck erodes. It's kind of cool um, that you see that. And notice that, it, you know, if you didn't have flow control, more water is going to start flowing through that coffee and over extracting. So you, when you see that happen, you know what's happening. Well, let's see what happens here. And if I can get all the timing right, and it's really not that hard. I just got to watch for 15 seconds on the clock here. And now when I'm doing a, a profile shot, I'm not concerned at all with the time. I'm at 11, 12, just starting to get some drips here with that lower. So now I'm going to take it up to one and a quarter until I see 20 and then back down to half. And you can see I'm running at about a four bars on the pressure gauge here. And I'm at 25 grams, 28. The shot is going just a little bit longer. And there we go. We'll finish right there. And I'm at 38.39 grams. I'm a, I'm a gram over. But let's give that a taste. I always like to stir the espresso so I can taste it all and not just get nailed by the crema. And it did look to me like there was maybe just a little more crema on this one. Oh yeah, that, that is far more balanced and I am getting a little, little more sweetness. I'm getting more of the fruit out of this. I get a little more. Oh yeah, that was just, that was far better than the first one, really. There's just no doubt about it. So that's one thing that you can do with flow control. Again, um, I do have like these, you know, if you want to see it in a sort of a graph form. So, and I hope to get these up on our uh, blog and, and wiki soon. So this is kind of how I work with these. So it was half a turn for the 15. Um, this was actually for a different machine. This is for the Pro 700. On this, I had to go up to one and a quarter, and that's why it's important to get your, uh, to do your calibration, to find out what your flow rates are. Because I know the flow rate I wanted was at one and a quarter on this machine, but that's kind of the basic idea. Whereas last Thursday, when I worked with that super fresh coffee, it was a very, it was a quarter turn. Again, that was on the Pro 700 um, for 15 seconds before I brought it up to just a half turn. And I had amazing results with that with a really fresh coffee. And again, this Thursday we'll be doing, working with more typical Italian style, lower cost bean blends, you know, stuff that runs $10 a pound. And I've got some that I just love. So we'll do that. Um, so we can do a little time check here. We do have a couple of minutes left. So if there's any questions coming in, I'll take a look at that. And I don't see, let's see. Will you customize these? With, uh, will you customize... E61 espresso machine with a nanotech shower screen and silicone gasket when ordering online. You can certainly order those parts online. Um, we do, you know, like have wood upgrades and that kind of thing for different machines, and those we would typically install in the machine. Um, if you get the shower screen, I did, they're really easy to change out, really, really easy um, to change out. And the silicone ones actually go in real nice. I did have a question. You know, if you're getting one of the silicone gaskets, they kind of have more of a rounder edge to one. I usually put that up because then it goes into that channel easier. Um, but I just love these. And again, the distribution on these things. Um, oh, my puck looks great. Um, they wipe like this. Of course, you know, you still do want to do the back flushing. But take a look at the, let me get it up to stock flow rate here. And if you have a machine at home with a stock uh, shower screen, go turn it on without without the port filter in place and see if you get that. You get an actual shower of water. So all parts of your coffee are getting the water at the same time. Most stock shower screens like this one, you're going to see a single stream. And again, I want consistency. I want to eliminate variables when I'm making espresso. And if you get that single stream, that means one part of your puck is getting wet before the rest of it is. And I want everything to get at the same time. Should coffee be refrigerated? 
Should coffee, oh boy. <laughs> so the wife just asked, should coffee be refrigerated? I know some people do. I think it's gonna act a little bit like baking soda if it's not really well sealed. It's gonna pick up flavors from your refrigerator. I know AJ, one of our moderators, uh, is doing some long-term testing. It, it happened right before this whole, you know, sheltering thing happened. He ended up, we were doing, uh, we dialed in a really fresh coffee, I believe it was a yogurt chef, and he did extractions one a day over 30 days without changing the grind to see where extraction timing, that kind of thing, and where the flavors worked best. I know he also freezed some of that really fresh coffee and did some uh, experimentation with that, which will have the results for once he, once he can come on back. AJ, please come back. Um, <laughs> really, and got some really cool, interesting results with that. I know, you know, he had it dialed into a good extraction and then the timing just went up, 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 and then I think came back down to kind of where it started. It was really interesting. and I can't wait to get more results on that and on the freezing of the coffee. I know a lot of folks do that. If you have to buy, you know, really expensive coffee in larger quantities to get the cost down, a lot of people will freeze it. And there's tons of opinions on that. Let me see if I got any more here. <laughs> yeah, hey Jason. Uh, let's see. I guess, I guess our moderators are doing a really nice job at, at answering a lot of the questions here. So I guess with that, um, I'm going to wrap up. I will say, you know, we're doing this, uh, the live streams Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've got three more flow profiles coming up. Um, I do take a hard look at those comments. I like to give re really detailed answers. Um, it has been difficult. It's uh, quite a lot to get all this set up and working. So my time has been a little bit limited. So if I'm a little bit slower than usually, usually I try to give everybody an answer within 24 hours or a working day. Um, it's been a little harder when I'm here all by myself making this all work technically. Um, but I really do enjoy interfacing with you. And if you have a flow control, and if you're using that, I've really loved hearing from people I have on some of our other flow videos about their results and it's great that they've had some of the same results. So with that, I please, everyone, you know, stay safe. Uh, maybe we're getting to the finish line here. I don't know, uh, but we'll keep doing this. And again, join me for more live streams. I do love the comments. I do love when you guys share detail um, and I do love interfacing with the, with the YouTube community there in the comments. It's really special to me. So uh, thanks to my wife, Tracy. And uh, we hope to see you back here Thursday at 1. Of course, you can watch these anytime. You don't have to watch them live. And I still watch the comments there. I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. Thanks for watching. Be safe. We'll see you back here real soon for more of the best on everything coffee.